all the terrifying images on September 11th, the collapsing Twin Towers were among the most horrific. The shocked nation saw the two largest structures in New York City's skyline dramatically crumble before our eyes. Given the vast scale and unprecedented nature of the horrifying spectacle and lacking any information to the contrary, viewers could only assume that the fiery crashes of 11, Flight 11 and 175 were the sole causes of the tower's subsequent collapses. Building number seven at the World Trade Center was a 47-story building with a steel frame. No airplane crashed into it, nor did the towers fall onto it. However, this building disintegrated on September 11th. This satellite image shows the World Trade Center about a year before the attack. Building 7 is the tall building at the top. Building number 1 is the North Tower. You can distinguish it from the South Tower by its antenna. Buildings 4, 5, and 6 were office buildings. Building 3 was a hotel. The attack on September 11th destroyed all seven of these buildings, and it damaged surrounding buildings as well. Here is a view from an airplane of the rubble of Building 7. The pile is very small. How did a 47-story steel building crumble into such a tiny pile of rubble? The Bush administration wants us to believe that fire caused it to disintegrate. Fires started in Building 7 at around 9 o'clock in the morning, a few moments after the plane crashed into the South Tower. These fires burned slowly all day. This photo shows the fires at 3 p.m. The fires are not easy to see because they are small, and the air is full of dust and smoke. Nearby buildings and reflections make it difficult to figure out where Building 7 is, so I'll fade out the other buildings for a moment so that you can see Building 7 more clearly. There are flames coming from only a few of the thousands of windows of this large building. Most floors do not have fires, and those that do are burning in a few small areas only. Compared to other office fires, these are small. Why didn't the sprinkler system extinguish them? This photograph shows the rear of Building 7. This side of the building doesn't have many fires either. There are no fires anywhere along the base of the building. Incidentally, in the background of this photograph are buildings number 5 on the left and 6 on the right. Both of those buildings have very serious fires burning inside. The government has never bothered to explain how Building 5 ended up with such serious fires. Despite the fact that the fires in Building 7 were so small that the sprinkler system should have extinguished them, at about 5.30 in the evening, the building suddenly imploded and crumbled into a pile of rubble. How did a few small fires cause Building 7 to collapse? According to Bill Manning, editor-in-chief of Fire Engineering, a magazine for fire departments, fire has never destroyed a steel building. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. And I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. Now the term pull, which you just saw Larry Silverstein use, is an industry term that means to demolish, a controlled demolition. What did Larry Silverstein exactly say here? Did he say World Trade Center 7 was a controlled demolition? If so, is it conceivable that through all the melee and hysteria that was going on on the morning of September 11th, a demolition crew could have came in and taken down World Trade Center 7 within seven hours? Most controlled demolitions take up to two weeks in intense planning to make happen. If this is the case, the only explanation that makes sense is that a controlled demolition was planned way in advance of September 11, 2001.